Hey, what's up everybody? On this episode of Roscoe's Reef, we're going to discuss something that goes in your tank and is often forgotten about or not even thought of uh, when it comes to the filtration of your tank. So let's get to it. So in this episode, we're going to talk about sand beds. Now, there's many ways that you can configure your tank when you set it up. There's people who run bare bottom. There's people who run minimal sand. There's people who run um, about a one inch or two inch layer of sand. And then they have the, the people who run deep sand beds. Well, on this episode, we're going to talk about my catch on sand beds, how I run my system, and also the benefits that I have. I'm also going to show you what happens in my tank when the when uh, I'm spot feeding corals or feeding fish. What actually happens to the food when it hits my sand bed? We're also gonna talk about how I um, take care of my sand bed and the fact that I do things a little differently than the norm. So with that said, let's go to the tank and take a look at what goes on in my sand bed. So first I'd like to start off by saying this is the way that I choose to run my sand bed and have since I've been in the hobby. Uh, I don't say that this is the best way to do it or even this is a good way of doing it, but this is the way that I do it. I don't guarantee any results or even say you should do this in your system because if not done right, it could lead to a system crash in the whole and you losing the whole tank. But so far, these are results of, of what I do in my system in that I don't stir my sand bed at all. Uh, basically... Uh, the way I've set up my sand bed is I combine both oolite sand, which is a fine powdery sand that if too much flow is put to it, you'll see it blowing around the tank, and also put a coarser grade sand within it to just keep it in place and so it doesn't blow around the tank. Now, one thing that um, is important when it comes to this sand bed is um, seeding it with enough micro and macro fauna to take care of the sand bed. Now, what happens is when food hits this tank, it's gonna settle, the stuff that's not consumed is gonna settle in along with the fish poo in the sand bed. And if you don't have something to take care of it, it'll lead to a big nightmare later on down the road. Now, here you see in my sand bed, just prior to feeding it, you're gonna see some of these little um, thread looking filaments as you can see here what these are are called spinoid worms and they're also known as ketoterap uh, if i'm saying that right um or parchment worm now what these worms are are it's it's a worm that makes a tube out of like a parchment kind of material like you see here on the rock or it will stick uh, gather up sand grains and stick it to the tube so it lives in it and um, they put out that white thread as a way of gathering food into the tube to feed themselves. Now they are the front line of my um, sand cleaning crew, as you would know it, uh, because they are voracious when it comes to devouring food or any kind of poop or any kind of detritus that's near them. Right here, you see there's a lot more out than in the prior uh, segment. And that's because the tank has been fed, the snails have come up out of the sand bed and start looking for food, and these worms are pursuing any and all speck of food. Now they live in my sand bed and on my rock, along with brittle stars, anaerobic and uh, aerobic bacteria that's in my sand bed. Um, and they devour and handle any of the food particles that have fallen into the sand bed and are not eaten by the fish. Or the corals. Now that's probably the one reason why I feel I could keep a sand bed without cleaning it and stirring it is because I have all these different variations of, uh, of basically a cleanup element in my sand um, that keeps my nitrate and phosphate levels down. Uh, every time I test my tank they are consistently low and this sand has not been stirred for about two years. Um, in my opinion, it does well for me. And again, this is what works for me. And in no way do I say go out and get a sand bed like this and not do anything. You know, don't clean it, 
I'm not suggesting that at all. It's just something that I do, and it's something that I'm looking at. And who knows, down the road, it may, may run into problems, and I may have to stir it up a little bit and, and start cleaning it. But every tank that I've had, and the two tanks I've had, uh, have worked the same. You see here, they are in my rocks, um, actively in the crevices looking for food because they know food is in the, in the column. And every time that I feed this tank, um, this is what happens. The brittle stars will stick out their tentacles and start looking for food along the rock, along with the worms, and all the bacteria will devour it. In my, in my experience, uh, my tank has always worked in that I have never had algae in my tank except for on the back glass. Uh, all the algae in my tank is in the sump, and again, helping stabilize my system is that constant balance between the macroalgae in the sump along with the cleanup crew that's down there and also what's in my sand bed. Now of course this topic is always highly debated in the reefing community because people get into the conversations of you have to stir it, you have to vacuum it, um, I don't want to run sand so I'm going no sand or the, have a deep sand bed because that's the way it is in the ocean and the, and the critters that live in there are, are taking care of everything. Or I have, in my case, I'm running about an inch and a half to two inches of sand and it's acting like a deep sand bed and everything is fine and stable. So this was basically a short video on a description of how I run my sand bed. Uh, this will be included in the updates to come of its progress, how it's doing, what the uh, levels are, and um, whether this experiment is actually working. So uh, with that being said, uh, any questions you have, feel free to drop a comment down below. If, you're, if this is your first time here, uh, hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell so this way you're alerted to uh, more videos coming out. Um, there's a lot of episodes coming up in the near future that I know you guys are going to find interesting. And um, there's a lot of excitement coming down the road for the channel. So as we look across the tank, um, as I always say, this is Scott, and I will see you next time around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.